Hey, what's happening guys? We are going to start talking about designing printed circuit boards today. Now, as you guys know, I signed a contract with PCBWay and I'll be making some videos for them over the next year. And it's going to be about making uh, PCBs, uh, board circuits, stuff like that. And I got one ready for them over the weekend. They loved the video until they saw that the software I used was from their competitor. I didn't know that, but they told me I couldn't use it. And I had to use something else. Now, I, I have used um, Eagle in the past, but I'm not really a big fan of it. So I went looking for uh, the best free PCB design. So I started here, PCB Web Designer. Well, it looked good, but this whole catalog wouldn't work. I couldn't pull up any components. This one, no, it looks like it's out of Windows 3.1. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, Express PCB, I liked it, but there was no way to output Gerber's. So couldn't do that one. KiCad, nah, nah, nah. Design Spark, I couldn't get to work. Anyway, what I ended up doing was finding this one called Dip Trace, which is fantastic. It has a content context sensitive uh, mouse use. And what, what that means is, depending on what you're doing, if, if you're in the schematic part of the program and you right click it's going to give you different options than when you're in the PCB layout it, it kind of knows what you're doing um, this is a free it starts out as free okay you can download a free version it'll give you up to 300 pins and then um, you know you can go up from there and we're going to design a circuit with it today we're going to do a simple super simple circuit one that um you guys know well the uh, blinking 555 timer the a stable multi vibrator we're going to do that circuit specifically so we don't have to worry about explaining the circuit you already know how it works what we're going to talk about today is picking and designing the components how to place them in the schematic and then turning that all into a working pcb board now before we go any further i just have to say pcb design separate from creating circuits and schematics is a black magic which very few people truly understand. I know enough to get myself in trouble, so I'm going to show you enough to get you in trouble. But the masters, you know, there are so many things to do. Now here's just some PCP design considerations I wrote down just before we started here. And these are just ones that I know, and I'm not a PCB board designer. We have to worry about track width and size pad the hole ratio, pad shapes, and sufficient airflow. Then if we're talking about signals, we don't want parallel tracks or crossing tracks because then they become antennas. Um, we have to worry about our impedance and our crosstalk. And since I work mostly with power supplies, we know in switch mode power supplies, we have to have a ground plane. We need to separate our power signal. We need to minimize our loops. I'll use our bypass capacitors, all that stuff you have to take into consideration. But I'm going to show you what I know, and we're going to get through it, I promise you. Here are our steps in designing a PCB. We're going to create the footprints of all the components and a schematic first. Boom. Then we will set up our design rules. And I'll show you when we do that. Then we're going to place and route our parts. We'll pour our ground plane and connect it to the net. Then we'll run our checks, and finally, We'll print our Gerber files. Are you ready? All right, go get some coffee. We'll get started. The first place we want to look when designing our circuit is at the data sheets for the components we're going to use. Now, we already know we're going to use the 555 timer, but it's still good to come down here and look through here. You want to look at the absolute maximum ratings. Here's telling you here our power dissipation, ESD. We can come down here and we can see our, our maximum supply voltage is 16 volts, our supply current. You want to check all that stuff over. Make sure you know what you're dealing with. There's usually some examples. There's monostable. We're going to be doing an A stable. It's not going to look exactly like this, but close enough. And it should give you some calculations here that you can use to figure out what's going on. So you want to do that for all of your components. You know, people always ask you, how many, how many amps can this circuit handle? Well, it'll handle as many as the lowest rated component will handle. The weakest link is always the, your breaking point. So you want to design up from there. Hope that made sense. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Here is our launcher. 
Now, dip trace comes in these modules. We have the schematic, the PCB layout, component editor, pattern editor. We're going to start with the schematic. All right, let me adjust the screen. All right, so here we are in our schematic editor. And over here on the left side, we have our libraries. Discrete, boom, boom. You can go down through here, all the different things. Discrete is excellent. You want to stay out of the symbols, and I'll tell you why when we get there. It even has, you know, libraries for specific manufacturer's components. So those are our parts. If you want to pick a part, you come in here, you pick which library you want it from. Then you can come down here and click, and it shows you two things. This which is our component, whoops, sorry, our component, and this, which is our footprint. You have to have the footprint to make the PCB board. If you don't have it, it's not going to work. So then over here on the other side is where we have, like, all our messaging. We have properties, design manager, our parts pins, and we're going to get into all that. Across the top, we have our easy menus. We have, you know, everything we need to get started here. So the first thing we need is a 555 timer. So I'm going to click here on the place component. And where's our search? We click on filter here. I'm going to look in all libraries and I'm just going to put NE555. Apply the filter and it's going to search. Okay, the search is complete and you see it has found us six components. There's the library. Here are the parts. So we have an NE555D, and you can see that's SMD. We're not doing SMD. Then we have the N, the D, which is another uh, uh, S SMD, SMD. And I think we're going to do the uh, 555P. So we click, come down here, and we click paste, place. <laughs> and we're just going to stick it here for now. That's all that we need to do. Okay, now our next part that we're going to need is our LED that we're going to blink. So I can just come up here to discrete. And there should be an LED right in here. Discrete LED. Make sure it has a footprint. And we'll place it. Oh, I don't like that. No. No, no, no. No, um... Runs opto sensors and LED. Yeah, we'll just, get, we'll just grab a uh, five millimeter red. Yep, that's better. Okay. Then we're going to need a resistor for it. Uh, I'm probably going to go with one K resistor. Just, just cause you can you can do the math and make it whatever you want, okay. Um, and then we need we're going to use a potentiometer because we're going to do the um, simple five 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 timer thing that I always do. I like it. Okay, I'm not forgetting anything. We need a capacitor. And again, we'll come through here. Capacitor, yep. Boom. Boom. All right, so we have all of our parts. Next, thing we want to do is label our parts. So it doesn't matter where you start. I could have swore I picked a five millimeter LED, but that's okay. We will change it to a five millimeter LED. And we want only one to mark it with the value. See how it shows? No, 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 no. Too much. There we go. Next, we've got our resistor, which we're going to mark as 1K, and we're going to show its value. Then we have our potentiometer, which is 50K, and we'll put up this value, and our capacitor. We'll do 0.1 microfarad. There's this value. Okay, so we got everything we need here. Uh, we can mark this. We'll show a name, I guess. 
Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Come on, hands, work with me. There we go. We have everything we need now. So this is going to go somewhere in this area. That's going to go down here somewhere. Let's start with our output. A lot of people start with power and ground, but I'm going to start with the output. No, 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 I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead. We will start with our power and ground, because that's just a good way to do it. CC in there? Come on. There we go. So we will put our VCC up here. And then we'll put our ground down here. Boom. And then we will start. There's a lot of moving stuff around that goes on. there like that I don't like how it does this googly thing so there's our ground we'll wire up VCC in a minute and you'll see why okay so next we have our output first thing we're gonna do is bring our you want to play come on why isn't the resistor moving There we go. We'll bring it over and we'll wire it in. And then we have our diode. I'm just going to move it like that. Put it over here like that. Like that. And then we need to take that back to ground. And there we go. So there's our diode end. Next, we need to wire up our timing. So we're going to, first of all, click on pin number five here. We don't use it, and we're just going to mark that not connected. And then we need a line from pin six to pin two. Like that. Come out here. Uh-oh. I messed up you guys didn't tell me this one's supposed to be the not connected all right so from trigger threshold we connect those two together like so and then we're going to put in our timing capacitor Which goes also from pin 2 and it goes to ground just like that now you could put in individual ground blocks but I like to show everything run into one place that's just me I'm weird I can't help it okay so next we're gonna put in this guy here this is what we use for our oops, I turned too many times, yeah. I gotta bring it way out here so everything lines up, right? I like things to line up neatly. So our discharge pin goes to the middle. Now I'm gonna move that. Ah, uh, don't do that. Move down one. Stop. Why won't you be nice? Alright, that's close enough. I could I'd end up spending all day doing this. Now we need a line from pin 6 comes all the way over here to there and finally pin 8 connects to the other side of this oh that makes me crazy those lines like that come on And that 
What is going on there? Okay, I guess we're stuck with that. Alright, we're fine. As long as everything works, it's no big deal. And our final line here. And now we have our circuit drawn up. I don't think I'm missing anything. Ah, yes. Pin 4, our reset pin, needs to be held high. Ah. Dag nab it. Okay, close enough. So there we go. Everything is laid out properly, as far as I know so far. Now what we can do here is we can name our nets. See how that says net 5? I'm going to call that DC, excuse me. Nope, I didn't mean to do that. Stop it. All right, properties. It is VCC. That's what we're calling it. Stop doing that. I don't know how to get rid of that. Oh, there we go. Oh, bad. Don't do that. Can I get rid of it somehow like this? Delete. Yeah. All right. Now we're good. Okay, that's VCC. And then we're going to come down here. And this net is our ground. It just helps to make things lined up like this so we know what we're doing. And this net is our output. Okay. Now, next thing you want to do is save. And you want to save often. We're going to call this um, 555 Q. I don't know why Q. Just something so I know which one I'm talking about. All right. I think we've got everything just about ready here. We're going to do a verification and run an electrical rules check. No errors found. Here, here's what we're checking. We're checking each individual pin, whether it's passive input, blah, blah, blah. And we're checking as to whether it is undefined passive input bidirectional. Boom. I mean, we're running these tests and everything looks good. So we've, we've done our job so far. Now, the next thing we can do is go convert to PCB. But before we do that, I'm just going to double check here and make sure that every piece has this, this footprint here. Otherwise, we'll get an error. That doesn't matter. The ground and the VCC flags don't translate over. They're only uh, theoretical. Okay, so everything is good. Then we say file, convert to PCB. And that launches our next program. You can use a different set of rules. We're going to stick with the rules from our schematic. Now, there we have everything. So you can see how the program looks very similar, but different things are happening now. We still have components over here that we can place. And now over here, you see we have our layers, top layer, bottom layer. The free version only only does two layers. If you want more, you're going to have to pay. Although you can do, um, you know, your silk screens and stuff. Don't worry about that. All right. So what you want to do now is to arrange these pleasingly and in a way that isn't going to cause any electrical problems. Now you see these bluish purple lines. Those are called rat lines. 
and they're telling you the way things cross and go back and forth and all that stuff and you see they readjust themselves as we move parts along and what we're trying to do is end up with as few crossings as we possibly can now this isn't going to be our final layout but we're very close that's our ground pin that's our VCC alright so the next thing we need to do is to add in a connector or a header rather we're just going to use a 1 by 2 header and that will be for power I'm going to stick it there for right now I'm going to move these guys down here alright So we can put this right about there. Okay. Now we're going to start moving things around. We want them to be close, but we don't want them to be too close. if I like that or not. Hmm. Man, this is where you really get into the uh, the black magic of this, trying to get everything exactly where you want it. Now, one thing I'm going to do here, we're on the top layer of the board, and I'm going to add... Um, a couple traces here. This is where the power is coming into our board. Alright, so those are good now. Yeah, alright, we're good. So, the next thing we can do is we can draw our border by the board place outline. So you just kind of click and place it where you want. That's not too bad. Too bad. Okay. Kind of wish I would have laid it out horizontally instead of vertically, but we're here, so whatever. Now, what we're going to do now is put in mounting holes. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to copy that. Paste, 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 and then we'll move them as we want them. Okay. All right. Now, the bottom of the board. I'm just going to let the auto router do it. I mean, there's only a couple things, so it's no big deal. And it's routed. So there's the top. There's the bottom. Now, just for fun, on the 
bottom silk, we are going to add a picture. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Oh, duh. I got hit the wrong rate button there, Paul. I'll lose my mind there for a minute. There, we have a little bear. The happy bear. All right, next we can add some text if we like. And we'll just call this 555 LED blinker. Oh, I forgot to. You have to actually tell it to make it. 555 LED blinker. Then you right click. Yeah, I think I got it this time. We want this one. Oh, hold on. I don't want that there. Got to make sure you're always working on the right area. There we go. All right, so we want to be now on the top silk. Then we will add in our text. 555 LED. Blinker. There we go. Now, I want to rotate it. I want to put it down here. We're going to have to change the font here a little bit. To make it fit. There we go. Six point. That's kind of small, but it'll work. All right. Now, again, save your work. Save it, save it, save it, save it. Save it all the time. 555Q, just like the other one. Whew. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, verification, and we're going to check design rules. No errors found. Check our net connectivity. No errors found. Good. Now, we're going to go back whoops, to the bottom. Bottom copper. And we're going to put in a copper fill. Just like drawing the board outline. Uh oh. I'll put on the clearance. Everything seems fine. And we want to connect it to the ground plane. Looks mm -hmm. good. Okay. Again, we save. And now, I think we're ready to preview our board. This will take just a moment. i right, got to put in the, the components. Hold on. All right, here it comes. Are you ready? There it is. Probably like that. There's our little bear design. There's our board. And what's really fun is we can change our solder mask color. Say we want it to be green. Just redraw it. Now we got the green solder mask. Pretty cool. Okay, 
one last step before we actually get boards in our hands and that is to make our Gerbers. So one last time, I'm going to save it. I always like to save things. And we are going to export Gerbers. Now here we have all of them. And what's really nice is that we can take a look at them. There's the top assembly, which is of course blank. But here's our top silk that has all of our markings on it. Here's our top solder mask. There's our top paste layer. And then there's the top. Then we have the bottom. And it is good to look at all of these. To make sure everything is as you wish. Alright, all looks good. Okay. And we will export all. I'm going to put them on the desktop create a new folder for it called 555Q. We'll put them in there and then we just save all of our Gerber files. And we're done. And file and we're going to export our drill file. Depends on which one you're using. I'm just going to let's do a uh, NC drill. I just hit auto, let him pick it out itself. No big deal. And we'll export all. Same place. Done. Everything is done and in place and good to go. All you got to do is order your boards. And we'll be doing a lot of that in the coming year. I love this. I didn't do a lot of this at work. I got as far as the uh, schematics. There were people who did nothing but lay out boards by themselves. That's all they did. So this is kind of interesting to me to do this kind of work. I'm just going to make it black to piss off Dave Jones. This is a simple, super simple circuit. I mean, there's, there's nothing really to go wrong here. But when we get into more... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? More involved stuff where you have to start worrying about your, your track widths and stuff like that. It, it gets more involved. And we'll talk about that over the coming years as we get more and more involved. I want to thank you guys for watching and sticking around and having some fun with me. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And big thanks to you guys. That's it. I'm out. Peace.